I recently picked up a Sony Xperia 1-2. I'm coming from using several generations of Pixel phones and Nexus phones before that. So it's a bit of a change from what I'm used to using. I have also had several generations of Sony mirrorless cameras from the a6000 to full frame a7 III to a7R III and have you know, enjoyed using them. So that's what led me to look in the direction of the Sony Xperia 1-2. This first photo is meant to illustrate a shortfall of HDR Plus in that if you have any kind of movement, the quality of the portion of movement is reduced because it's not able to sample multiple exposures of the moving object. So you'll end up with less detail and less contrast in that area of the photo. And if you're like me, much of my photography takes place by bodies of water where there is often wind. Any amount of wind is causing any foliage around to have some movement in it, and then plus the movement of the water, so you often get situations where there is movement in the photo. The second point this image shows is in high contrast lighting, oftentimes the pixel will try to flatten out the image and make the lighting even across the frame. And in my situation, most of the time when I'm looking to take photos, I'm looking for interesting lighting, often that means high contrast scenes where subject is, has some interesting lighting on it compared to fore and background. So you end up, you know, with a high contrast photo. The Xperia better represents the scene in this photo by maintaining those highlights and showing the shadows as shadows rather than trying to bring them up. When zoomed in, you can see how much additional detail is captured in the Xperia shot. Um, the leaves have way more detail in them, whereas the Pixel looks really soft and does not maintain that detail. And it's partially due to the movement and possibly focus as well. And that's another huge advantage for the Xperia. So it is really good at nailing focus and keeping that focus. Without even having to select the object that I'm trying to focus on, it knows where to focus and can track that movement really well without any input from me other than holding the shutter halfway down and then taking the shot. Here's another example of there being some movement in the scene. Similar area where we're by a body of water so there is some breeze continually in this area. So the berries are, are moving around as seen in the video. Um, and again the, the Xperia nails the focus and is able to maintain focus without any input from me whereas the pixel is struggling to keep focus on that object and the resultant photos you also see where the contrast is maintained in the Xperia shot whereas the pixel shot tries to even out the exposure and to me the contrasty shot is the better shot and it's more representative of the light in this situation and was intentionally chosen because of that contrast. Um, and as you zoom in, you can tell much more detail is kept in the Xperia shot where the pixel has very little detail and the actual subject of this photo where the Xperia maintains that detail quite well. This next photo is a landscape with some shadow and highlights. So it's not evenly lit across the entire frame. And you can see again the pixel tries to even out this exposure while the Xperia maintains the shadows and highlights to a better degree, which I think makes for the better photo. And as you zoom in, you can see now the Xperia again maintains much more detail. And the detail is even kept in the still objects to a much higher degree than the pixel. So you can see in the tree, the texture in the tree and the sign that there's way more detail in the Xperia photo. In this next photo, I'm trying to demonstrate the bokeh for both the Pixel and the Xperia. Uh, the berries that are subject of this photo were stationary, so there really wasn't any movement. Um, and the lighting, you know, was kind of uniform, but there is some 
little bit of highlight and shadow here and you can see that the Xperia does a better job of keeping this subtle lighting and the pixel has a tendency to flatten out again. As expected the bokeh for the Xperia is much nicer than the Pixel. It's a bigger sensor with a faster lens, so you know, these results are expected. But it is a real nice benefit to these newer phones that have big sensors, is you can actually get real bokeh that looks pretty good if you get close to the subject that isn't fake and not using software to generate. So you don't have these errors that pop up when you're using um, portrait mode, which none of them, in my opinion, are very good. They all look fake and they all have their own issues so being able to get some real bokeh that is natural is a big benefit of a bigger sensor. As you zoom in you can see the Xperia maintains more detail again. It's much more detail in the shot uh, compared to the Pixel so another win there for the Xperia. In low light I was expecting the Pixel to have a pretty good advantage because of its night mode. Um, you know, while the Xperia has a much bigger sensor and faster lens will definitely help it, but being able to have a night mode from owning a Pixel has been very beneficial. Um, a lot of times the images are not great, but they're usable. You can get RAWs out of the night mode as well, so if you don't care for the exposure, you can dial it back, which is what I did a lot of times with the Pixel um, night mode. To my taste, lightens things too much, so you end up with unrealistic looking photo. So you can take that raw file and dial back the exposure and the shadows some, so you can get a more natural looking photo out of them. In this shot here, you can see one of the advantages for the Xperia. Um, the lens flare on the Pixel is not as well maintained and controlled. Uh, whether it be coding or lens design, the Xperia is supposed to have size T coating on it which is very good coating and supposedly I designed optics too which who knows what that really means but um, as a whole the lens flare is better controlled on the Xperia. The Pixel tends to overexpose in night mode more than I like but it can be corrected in post um, but overall I prefer the look of the Xperia photo um, and the way that it has the shadow and highlights and actually has some contrast there. Um, as you zoom in, you can really see how the pixel lost a lot of detail um, in the brick wall and the grass. Um, it had a hard time maintaining any amount of detail there and the Xperia looks much better in that regard. So um, the single exposure of the Xperia did a, mu did a much better job of keeping that detail and I prefer the Xperia photo for sure. This is another low light shot. Uh, you can see the pixel again has a tendency to have more exposure to it. Um, and, and in this situation, I, I kind of a wash between which one I prefer uh, as far as the exposure of them. Um, you know, there's definitely more shadow to the Xperia, but it's also lost a lot of detail in that shadow. Um, as you zoom in though, again, you can see that there's more detail preserved in the Xperia and the highlights and a lot of detail lost on the Pixel. So in this one, it's kind of a wash. There's also more noise in the Xperia sky that you can see um, where the Pixel does a good job of removing that noise. But you end up with a sky that I think is just kind of unnatural looking, but you could pull back that exposure in post and be kind of a toss up to which one I would prefer if properly um, grading them in post. The autofocus on this phone is by far the best I've seen on any phone and it rivals the best of mirrorless cameras as well. Um, I feel like that point is not stressed enough that autofocus on a stills camera is one of the most important factors and judging that camera for me really really is important and this is hands down the best autofocus on any phone by a, f by a long shot. I'm not going to talk about colors too much in this. Um, as a whole, you know, I prefer the colors that Sony's outputting, but um, anybody serious about taking photos 
you can get raw files out of both of these cameras and um, even with the Pixel, for years now, you can get HDR raw files, which, which are pretty good to have. So you can edit the colors to whatever you want and make them what you want. So um, I'm not going to comment too much on that, but as a whole, I prefer the Sony colors out of these photos here. For this comparison, I'm using the Pixel 3. Uh, it should be pretty representative of the more modern Pixels. They really haven't changed much at all. And the camera design, so um, all the way from the Pixel 2 now to the Pixel 5, it's using the same sensor. Uh, the lenses have changed a little bit, but nothing too drastic. And the software, you know, the way it does white balance is a little different now, but um, the amount of data that it captures and the dynamic range has remained pretty similar throughout them all. For those wanting to use RAW files, which I highly recommend, um, you can get much better photos out of either of these phones using the RAWs. Uh, the Pixel and the way that it flattens a lot of the dynamic range out of a, a photo um, it can be recovered a lot of the times using the RAW file. So you can get a more contrasty shot just by editing the RAW. But one thing you cannot capture back is the detail. So that softness is not able to be recaptured um, and not a lot you can do about it. It's just a byproduct of it trying to uh, stack all these images and you having some hand movement and possibly the subject movement as well so um, and you end up with some soft photos sometimes out of them 